What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Let's say you own a store and in this store, well you sell all kinds of stuff. So one day a customer approaches you and asks about a particular item. Now because you don't have it immediately, but you will be getting some in the future, you tell them to come back later. Here the customer and you are faced with two options. The customer could either visit the store every day and check for the product's availability, however most of these trips would be pointless if the product is still unavailable, or you, as in the store owner, could send an email to all your customers each time a new product becomes available. Now, while this could save a few customers endless trips to the store, at the same time it could upset our other customers who aren't interested in these products, and they will most likely consider it spam. So, what we need is kind of a subscription mechanism, where our customers can choose when and based on what to be notified, or even if they want to be notified at all. And to design such a system, there is no better way than to apply the observer pattern. The observer design pattern is a behavioral design pattern that notifies multiple objects or subscribers about any events that happen to the object they're observing or publisher. So, to implement our previous store customer scenario, what we need is something like a notification service which will sit inside our store class. Now, this notification service should keep track of the customers or subscribers or listeners that want to receive our notifications via email like we previously mentioned. These listeners will be represented by a list of email message listener objects which will contain the email corresponding to each of our customer subscriber. This listener class will and should have an update method whose responsibility is to actually send the mail to the subscribed customer. Of course, and as previously mentioned, the service we are implementing should also grant our customers the ability to subscribe and unsubscribe as they please from the notifications they are receiving. Now, when a new item arrives, we should have the ability to trigger this notification from our store class, and to do that we added a new method in the store class, the new item promotion method. This method will call the notify method of our notification service, which will go over all our subscribers, or listeners in this case, and alert them via mail one by one, and that's it. Okay, I know some of you may be wondering, why did we go through all this? Why not just create a list, loop over it, send the emails, and be done with it with a single method or class? Well, you see, while this may work, what we implemented is far more open for extension than what I just proposed. So, suppose our store has a mobile application, and now our customers get to choose if they want to get alerted by mail or via a push notification on their mobile if their account is connected. If you had a single loop, that would be kind of hard to implement, but with the observer pattern, it couldn't be easier. Take our current implementation. All we have to do is add another type of listeners and make both our listeners implement the same interface. This listener will work with usernames instead of emails, and its update method will send push notifications to these user accounts instead of emails. Now our client code will look something like this. We might have a store object along with several subscribers, some via mail and others via push notification. When a new item arrives, all we have to do is call the new item promotion method, and each subscriber will get notified via its chosen corresponding listener. Let's take this a step further, and imagine we want to add promotions, or we want to notify subscribers based on different events, and not just if a new item has dropped. To do that, let's start by creating an event enum, and the values this enum can take are new item and sale. So we are going to give our customers the ability to subscribe to either new item events or sale events. The next thing to do is transform the list of subscribers present in the notification service to a map. The key of this map will be an event, and the value of each key will be a list of the customers listening to that particular event. Finally, all we have to do is adapt the update, notify, subscribe, and unsubscribe methods to take into consideration the event at hand, and consider that the changes we are doing should be applied on a particular list of listeners, the subscribers of a particular event, and not all of our subscribers. With the implementation now complete, let's go ahead and take a look at the structure or class diagram of the observer pattern while trying to compare it to the store customer example we just implemented. The first class you might notice is the publisher class, which was the notification service in our previous example. 
Publishers contain a subscription infrastructure that lets new subscribers join and current subscribers leave the list of listeners. When a new event happens, the publisher goes over the subscription list and calls the notification method declared in the subscriber interface on each subscriber object. Next are the subscriber interface and concrete subscriber classes. These were respectively represented by the event listener interface and both the email message listener and mobile app listener classes. The subscriber interface declares the notification interface. In most cases, it consists of a single update method. On the other hand, concrete subscribers perform some actions in response to notifications issued by the publisher. All concrete subscribers must implement the same interface so the publisher isn't coupled to these classes. The last class we have is the client class. The client creates the publisher and the subscriber objects separately and registers the subscribers for publisher updates. So, to sum everything up, the observer pattern allows you to change or take action on a set of objects when and if the state of another object changes. And this is done even if the actual set of objects that changes is unknown beforehand or changes dynamically at runtime. On top of this, by using this pattern, you will be applying the open-closed principles as you can introduce new subscriber classes without having to change the publisher's code, and vice versa if there is a publisher interface. So that's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, thank you guys for watching, take care, and I will see you in the next one.